What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna add a hint function to our word jumble game with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna add a hint function to our word jumble game that we did in the last video. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we created this little word jumble game, kind of fun, learned all kinds of neat stuff, how to shuffle things and stuff like that. In this video, we wanna add this hint function. So you get a word, you're not quite sure, you can get a hint, starts with M. Hit it again, I, S, S, O, U, R, I, right? So that's what we're gonna work on in this video. So let's go ahead and close this, head back to our code, and I'm gonna use the same code we did in the last video. It's uh, shuffle.py, you can check my GitHub uh, account if you need that code, or just watch the last video, it's not overly complicated. So let's come down here and let's create some more buttons. So here we have our answer button, and let's just create another button called hint button. And that's gonna be a button. And we wanna put it in that button frame. And let's put the text as hint, right? And the command as hint as well. And let's go hint underscore button dot grid. And let's put this in row zero, column two. And then give this a pad X of 10 just to separate it from the other two buttons that we've got. So we've got this command hint. So let's go ahead and create that. So let's come up here and anywhere around here. Let's go uh, create hint function. And let's define that. And let's just put pass for now. Now we need to loop through the word that we picked. And we need to keep track of how many times we loop through it so that we can know which letter to put up on the screen. So we don't wanna put all the letters up at once, we wanna put one at a time. So to put one at a time, we need to have some sort of counter. So let's come outside of this function and let's say create hint counter. And we're gonna to need to use this inside of this function and outside of this function. So it needs to be accessible everywhere. So let's just go ahead and make this global and let's just call this hint count. And then starting off, let's set the hint count to zero, right? So now we need to pass this hint count into our hint function, right? And we can do that using the button that we click, the hint button. So normally you would just put a function on your command and then slap the thing you wanted to pass in. That's normal Python, but Kinter doesn't quite work normally when it comes to passing things into functions via buttons. You have to actually use a lambda. And we've done this lots of times throughout this video series. You just come over to your command here and type lambda and then colon. And then it, now this looks like a capital L. It's not, it's lowercase. This is just sublime text, makes it look kind of like a capital L. Definitely lowercase L. This is a capital L, right? That looks a lot different. So definitely lowercase L colon, and then just call our hint function, passing in this hint count, right? So now we can come back to our hint thing, and now we need to account for that. So let's call this count, right? So we're gonna pass it in, the hint count will become the variable count, right? So we're gonna need to then pass this count back out again. So let's create another variable inside of here called hint count, and let's call that uh, hint count. And then let's set that equal to whatever our count is that we just passed in. So out here, it's zero. So zero gets passed in right here. And then hint count becomes zero, which is our count, right? Okay. So now, remember from the last video, whenever our word, the word that we selected, what is that? So we can come up here to our shuffler and let's see, word is the word that we've selected. Remember we have this Python list and it has all the state uh, the state names. And then we, we use this choice function to pick one of them at random and it becomes word. And it's global so we can use it anywhere. So we can use that inside of this function here, uh, here, right? So the word is the word we're gonna be giving a hint about, right? So 
we need to know how long that word is, how many characters are in it, because we only want to put one letter up at a time as a hint, right? So let's create a variable and let's call it uh, word underscore length. And let's create a, a little comment here. Let's say get the length of the chosen word, right? So our word length is going to equal the length of this word, right? So if it's, uh, you know, main, that would be M-A-I-N-E, that would be five, right? So our word length would become five, okay? So now let's show our hint. Now, before we do that, we actually need a label on the screen. So let's come down here underneath our answer label and let's create a hint label, right? And it's gonna be a label and we wanna put it in root. And right now we want the text to equal nothing. And let's give this a font equal what? Like we usually do Helvetica and let's just give it a size 18. So it's sort of the same size as our answer label. And then we can hint underscore label dot pack this on the screen, give it a pad Y of, I don't know, 10, push it down a little bit underneath our answer label. So let's go ahead and save this. Now we can use this hint label to put the hint up on the screen. So let's come back up to our hint function. And now how do we wanna do this? There's probably a bunch of different ways, but we know the length of the word. So let's say it's five characters long and we know our current count, our count is zero. So if the count is less than the length, that means there's more to show, right? So we can go, we could say if, and let's go count, because this is our current count, right? Here and here. If count is less than our word length, right? This guy right here. So let's go word length. Then we just do stuff. Well, what do we want to do? Well, we want to put something on the screen. So we can go our hint label dot config. And then we could say the text to equal what? Well, we definitely want to put what the current thing is. So to the beginning, it's zero, it's there's nothing there because there's we haven't hit the hint button yet. But after we hit the hint button once, one letter will show up. And then if we hit the hint button again, we want that first letter to show up and then the second letter. If we hit the hint button a third time, we want the first two to show up and then the third one. So whatever's already there, we want to show up first, right? We don't just want to put one letter up at a time. So that would be like our current hint label. So that would be hint underscore label, but we want the text of it so we can call uh, text, right? But this is gonna be, we also then want the next letter in the count to show up as well. So that would be uh, whatever our word is. Now, to put individual characters of a string, you can treat that string like it's a list. And to call items in a list, we use these brackets. And you know, list items start at zero. So the first letter is the zeroth item. So we can just put zero, right? The next letter will be the oneth item. Uh, that would be one, right? So Let's just put zero and see what happens. Now this is all jumbled together. So let's use an F string for this uh, since these are all sort of variables, right? Uh, let's wrap this one. And let's wrap all of these in quotation marks. So we can go like this and then at the end, put a closing one. And since it's an F string, we have to put an F in front of it, right? So this will sort of substitute out these things into the string itself and print them on the screen. So if we go ahead and save this, and we might get an error because we're not really done with this yet, but let's run this just to see. So we can go python shuffle.py. Oh, yeah, and it's throwing us an error here. Let's take a look. Uh, hint label, we need double quotation marks. All right, that should work. So let's run this again. And if we click it just once, it just shows A for Alabama. If we click it again, it's just gonna keep going A, 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 right? Because that's the first letter, the zeroth letter. And if we take a look at this, that's just what we've put right here. Well, we don't want just the first letter. We want whatever the current number is. So every time we click this, we need to increase our count and then output count here instead of an actual number. But 
we need to make sure that we increase that count every time we click the button. So to do that, we would just go hint underscore count plus equals one. So just to run through this again, when we start, our hint count is zero, right? That gets pushed via this button into our hint function, which is up here, right? Which becomes this. So count is zero. So when we put out the first letter, we're saying the zeroth letter in Word, which is the first one. Well, then here we go hint count plus equals one. So it was count was zero, but then hint count becomes one. Why hint count and not count? Because count is local to this function. Hint count, we've made global, and we use it here too. So now this out here will become one, right? So then when we click the button a second time down here, we're passing that hint count, which is one now, right? So then when we're up here, this becomes one. So then we'll, we'll put out the original stuff, which we already did in the, in the last one when we clicked it the first time, A for Alabama. And then we'll also do hint, uh, word one, which is the second item. So, because remember the list items start at zero, so zero, one, this would be an L, right? Then hint count gets increased again. Now hint count becomes two. And next time we click the button, two gets passed right here and two gets output here and then it becomes three. Next time we click the button all the way until we get to the, the, the length of the word right here. If count is no longer less than the word length, this whole thing doesn't run at all and we're just done, right? So this should work. This is really all we need. So let's go ahead and save this, run this one more time. And so oh, we got a big long one. So hint C O N N E C T I C U T Connecticut, right? And we could type this in Connecticut <laughs> and answer and correct. Now we might want to pick another word and this is still showing up on the screen. So we need to clear this whenever we click this, pick another word. And notice that our answer button is listed second. Maybe we wanna move that over. So let's do that real quick. Let's pull up our code and come down here to our answer button, answer, yeah, answer button. And I'm just gonna copy this and put it here above the pick another word button. And we'll just change this to column zero and change this one to column one, save this, run this again real quick just to make sure that worked. All right, so yeah, now our answer button is listed first. That feels right, right? That feels a little better having the answer button right there. Okay, so now when we click this pick another button, we want this down here to clear as well. So let's do that real quick. So that would be our hint label. So when we click our, let's see, pick another word button, it fires the shuffler command. So we need to make a change to our shuffler command. So let's uh, clear hint label. Let's just go hint label config text equals nothing. There we go. And give a little space there. Okay, so let's save this and make sure that worked. So hint, 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 hint. Pick another word, boom, that disappears. Hint, 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 hint. Oh, that doesn't work anymore. We also probably now need to reset the hint count. So down here, our global hint count equals whatever. Let's come up here. And so when we click shuffler, let's clear the hint label and clear hint count. So we'll set that equal to that. Hopefully that will fix that little problem. Run this, hint, 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 pick another word, hint, 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 pick another word, hint, 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 uh, answer incorrect, Idaho, correct, pick another word, and that works. And okay, that looks like that's working. So, okay, pretty cool, pretty easy, and uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. Now we're just outputting this hint answer down here. You could flash up a message box maybe if you wanted to. We've talked about message boxes and other videos in this series. You know, get creative, do whatever you want, have some fun with it. So it is Friday here in Vegas. Looking forward to the weekend. You guys got any plans? Hit me up in the comments below. Tell me what you guys are doing. I think I'm gonna do some more hiking. I'm on a hiking kick right now. Uh, we've been going up to Mount Charleston. It's 
super hot here in Vegas in the summer, but up on Mount Charleston, which is like half hour away, it's like 20 degrees cooler because of the altitude. So uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. So probably do that. Maybe get some tacos. I don't know. <laughs> Looking forward to it, whatever we do. Uh, because hey, weekend. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, 45 plus courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.